Open your wallet and buy corrugated cardboard. Ford has done it again. They've built a car out of office supplies, rubbed it with coitus oils, and you're all assuming the position to buy it. Uh. This episode of Regular Car Reviews is sponsored by Groove Life. There was this one time at the Philly airport, wallet fell out of my pocket, and my cards fell out of it. I look like such a first-time traveler. That won't happen with the Groove Life wallet. Because it's 2023, are you still using the same wallet from 2003? Now is the time to update your wallet game with Groove Life. The Groove Wallet is a sleek, low-profile wallet engineered for everyday use. Flick it open and it'll fan out up to six cards beautifully. It's durable. It's made of high-quality aluminum. It's unlike any wallet I've ever seen. Do they stand behind it? Yeah. 94-year no BS warranty. This is the last wallet you're ever going to need. Makes you look professional, too. Check into a hotel. You're pulling out an old trifold like mine. Ugh. Ugh. No. Use this. And they have a new attachment, the Groove Wallet Go. It's a perfect low-profile companion to your Groove Wallet. Or it works with an iPhone 12, 13, or 14. It uses innovative micro-suction technology to give you the ability to add another three cards plus cash. The wallet is so slim, you can easily fit it in your front pocket. You barely know it's there. And they got more than just wallets. They got belts, rings, watch bands, AirPods. The belt is cool. It has a good stretch to it. And the buckle? Neodymium magnets. Those rare earth magnets, they're in the buckle. That's how you close it. Oh, it's satisfying. To make things go clip down. Anyway, it's time to bring your wallet into the 21st century. Head to GrooveLife.com regular for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you're going to find, but you have to use my link. GrooveLife.com slash regular for 20% off your order. One last time, that's GrooveLife.com slash regular for 20% off your order. Thank you, and thank you for supporting regular car reviews. The headliner is peeling. Doors rattle. The windows don't seal from the factory. The rear hatch is as long as the passenger doors, but it opens sideways. That means you can't back into any parking space and express dominance. The cargo area is smaller than a Jeep Wrangler. The rear seats don't fold flat. Also, Ford doesn't want you to know this, but these tires, these are the licensed Goodyear Jeep Wrangler OEM tires with the word Wrangler removed. You see, to explain the the Ford Bronco, we have to revisit the Jeep. Because Jeep had the monopoly on all the Patriot cosplayers with their JL Wrangler. Jeep was the go-to car for all those pathetically heroic young men who are on gear just to work out. Every t-shirt they own has a black and white American flag on the left sleeve. Every long sleeve t-shirt they own has a vertically oriented black and white American flag on the back, but this image is tattered and ripped. Our Jeep driver has been through hell and wants you to know it. Validate him. Congratulate him. Praise him. Tell him he's a good boy. Kiss his boo-boos. He lost his confidence, so he's waving the flag as hard as he can to get it back. Now, in 2021, Ford wanted some of Jeep's money, so they brought back the Bronco. Don't go to therapy. Don't volunteer in your community. Don't have a dialogue with your own trauma and prejudice. Don't take extreme ownership of your behavior. Buy an overpriced 4x4. Now our hero struts and frets upon paved roads, and then, out of warranty, is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Boom! Yes! Even in a car review, Shakespeare works. I'm gonna mend family relations. Look at me, Mom. I'm buying American again. So the Bronco serves this purpose for all the people who are patriots but they're wearing Patagonia vests, boat shoes, and they know a few things about Linux, which is helpful when a programmer in Phoenix gets a girlfriend and now your USB driver stops working. The price range is airline fees wide on the Bronco. 39000 to 89000 And it's all the little accessories, like badges and micro lifts, 
and paint codes. It's brilliant, isn't it? It's like Ford took a line out of Corvette's notebook. Get all the options and special editions. Guess what? There's no base model. The closest thing this has to a base model is the Big Bend Edition. <sighs> okay, so in reverse order of prestige, the prices are rounded up because if you think you can buy one of these things for MSRP, haha, ha, no. All right, starting at the bottom. For $40,000, the Big Bend Edition. For $43,000, the Black Diamond Edition. For $48,000, I can't do the accent, but it's the Outer Banks Edition. For $48,000, it's the Heritage Edition. For $50,000, the Badlands Edition. For $56,000, you get the Everglades Edition. For $60,000, the Wild Track Edition. Hmm. For $70,000, the Heritage Limited Edition. <sighs> and at the top of the list, for a whopping $90,000, the Bronco Raptor. What we're looking at here is the Sasquatch, which technically is not an edition, it's just a package. And it costs $8,000 above whatever trim you have. In the upper levels, Everything that you get on the Sasquatch edition comes naturally as standard. At first glance, a Ford Bronco is like a Kia Soul and a Honda Element had a baby. And then the baby took a bunch of HGH. What, what is Ford even going for here? The only thing this really shares with the original Bronco is the name and the terrible build quality. Yeah, you get the notion that you can go off-road to your heart's content when really the most overlanding you're going to do is moving this onto the lawn to open up your driveway for family reunions. Ford Bronco, the official car of roughing it in your own backyard. Which is a shame, because the crawler gear is awesome. The crawler gear, you put this thing in crawler gear and four-wheel drive low, I'm about to take my foot off the accelerator and slip my foot off the clutch, sending the clutch pedal springing upward with no throttle input, and guess what? It's not going to stall. Four low, four by four shift in progress, and branch tech, okay, we're in four low. And is there a lockout? Yep, same as reverse. Same as reverse, down, down. down. Okay, so we're in the crawler gear. We have no throttle input. I'm just gonna do a really fast release. I'm not gonna slip it off, but let's just see what it does. All right, no stall. Let's try that again. Snapping off now. Eh, look at that. Doesn't stall. So this is a capable 4x4, but Ford really wants you to look at the Bronco as an adventure brand. At least they're, that's what their press materials would seem to indicate. They've described it as an SUV born to breathe when the air gets thick and designed to press on when the trail turns others around. Notice what they did there turns others, but not you. you were, you're the chosen one. This is like talking about how tough your hometown is and then bringing a gun to a fist fight. But the adventure branding is working on younger drivers, if you believe social media. And I couldn't tell you why, other than maybe size and the idea that you could go on adventures with your friends. But how many friends are you really going to fit into the two-door model? How many supplies are you going to even fit in here because you can't really fit them in the back? and the seats don't fold flat. So it's either take a bunch of supplies or have friends. It's almost as if the Bronco's youth appeal is that it's a shortcut to adulthood. The thought that now you're older, you're making career money, so you should be driving something that's more grown up. But who wants to be an adult anyway? Being an adult is never remembering passwords to anything and being told you're too old to just own two pairs of pants. I don't get what the rush is. But if the Bronco gets you there sooner, more power to you. The engine here is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost inline four. It makes about 270 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 310 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. Although I've read, some, I've read some statements that this thing peaks at 300 horsepower. 
Either way, it's an engine that has been a mixed bag for consumers. Some people swear by the EcoBoost, and other people swear it leaks oil. Other people say it consumes oil, and it has head gasket issues, and overheating problems. I mean, they're real. It got to the point where Ford created a customer satisfaction review to keep track of all those issues and repair them as they occur, because, well, they kind of designed themselves into a corner. The 2.3 liter EcoBoost is the only engine you can get if you want the seven-speed manual transmission. I know, six-speed six speed plus crawler. Fuel economy is 16 city, 18 highway, 17 combined. It drives ish. Everything it does is ish. The stick shift feels like it's made out of Legos. It engages and then wobbles around a little bit like it's insecure about what gear it's in. And you will be shifting a lot. You need every single one of these gears to make use of the 2.3 liter engine. I mean, it's fun to rev it out. I mean, the engine can rev for sure. And according to the owner, the crawler gear is fantastic for crawling through traffic. You know those bits where you're going one or 0.7 miles an hour? Well, suddenly the crawler gear is not such a bad option to have. It is wide. This would be fine in the Midwest, where stuff is nice and wide, or out in the real western parts of the United States. But here on the East Coast, no. On back roads, this gets a C-. minus. You are well aware of where your mirrors end. The whole thing feels wobbly and unsure of itself. And I'm so sorry to just get back on Team Toyota with this, but after I was done driving the Bronco, and I get back into my 23-year-old Toyota 4Runner, I'm, I'm sitting in this in my Toyota, I'm like, this is a better machine. The Ford Bronco is as impressively hollow as loveless sex. It's just enough gratification to take the place of long-term fulfillment. But it leaves you desperate for an experience that would leave you feeling whole. And look, you don't want a Ford Bronco. You want the original one, don't you? But you don't really want that. You want the Icon Bronco. But the smoking tire just drove one, and those are $300,000 trucks. Suddenly, $90,000 seems like a bargain. Because as much as I think the Bronco is for people who go hiking with no cell phone case because Apple CarPlay will take care of it, and also their children have mature opinions about sashimi, this is a good-looking rig. I just spent the whole review just bad-mouthing this thing, and then I step back and look at it. My lord, there isn't an angle that looks phoned in. All stats are in charisma with the Ford Bronco. It drives mid, shifts mid, accelerates mid, brakes are... Ugh. But then you get out and you look at it. The, the, your eye flows along the side from headlight to taillight by this permanent crease. And it looks like it was drawn by a hand, like it wasn't designed in a computer. The, this is the closest modern car that recaptures 1960s style. How did they hide all the crash zones and the pedestrian safety and, and the thickened uh, uh, pillars. How did they meet rollover protection and make a truck look this good? There is minimal badging here and no angry gashes or slats or aggressive. Rawr. The seats are cloth. The dash is classic and simple. It looks like I could have fun in here. It looks like this truck or 4x4 four four is waiting to show me a fun and rewarding afternoon. It looks like a car that could love me back and justify its present, presence in my life. A Bronco is not solving any practical problems. There are better off-roaders for adventures. I concede that Wranglers are a better value for 4x4 four four beaters, and they have more aftermarket support. But what's the appeal of the Ford Bronco other than beauty? This looks amazing. I even think that the little tie-down straps in the front 
are useful to figure out where your car ends. They're, they're functional and petite. I get it. The money's in the accessories. All these little places say accessory ready. This is a car that makes men bite their lower lip. You need something that can make your commute more bearable without you having to move somewhere less remote. It fills a deficit. I even think this car could get people to buy a Ford who never considered one. It's so good looking it could make a hardcore GM guy buy Ford. It's hard to do a non-judgmental review of a car that seems to want judgment. To crave it. Like a terminally online kid who's deep into his personal victim narrative. And maybe we're doing the wrong thing by feeding into it. But by the same token, a car has a responsibility to be better than just a pretty face. You deserve a better car than the Ford Bronco. This is a hopeful car for sad times. It deserves to be better made, but its beauty is so good, maybe it'll make people take care of it. People want hope. They want a brighter tomorrow. They want to see the past and believe it is better, and that's why scalpers were able to get close to six figures for these things during the pandemic. Maybe it's too late to go back. But within the parameters of what we have on the market right now, this is the most hopeful American car made today in 2023. And if you bought one, I don't blame you. I felt a sense of peace and security driving it in spite of all its flaws. Beauty goes a long, long way. Thank you. Um, it's fun. You don't know why you bought it? Yeah, dude, it's, it's good. It's it's really fun. Um, it's cool. I've bought one since they dropped them, honestly. But like, $44,000. The literal only options are Sasquatch back, which is lift, tires, lockers, and a steel front bumper. It, for $44,000, does not have a leather wrapped steering wheel or shift knob. Like, it's nothing. So you're talking about the frameless windows. So, frameless windows. Um, Ford frameless windows so you can take the doors off easier for whoever does that like I've owned it since May I've never taken them off I'm sure eventually they wiggle a little bit whoa oh no this oh. is so much better than it used to be oh yeah yeah so front, right here there's a couple drain plugs you undo those and there's brackets to adjust the window uh -huh. um, they didn't do that from the factory so just driving the car you'd hear this smash around it takes like <laughs> three minutes to adjust it's not difficult but Ford did not bother to do that mm -hmm. from the factory so like it's build quality is atrocious the sound deadening headliner is just this piece of shit it's already <laughs> filling up no way yeah 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 the car was built in March yeah it has 5,500 miles on it now like it's new and it yeah like this is Ford this is a flagship oh. product and this is what we get um, you were looking at it earlier Back tailgate. This is. Yeah, there's nothing holding this glass in place. It's just. Yeah. The only thing that holds this in place is the top of the tailgate. Yeah. And my cargo area is one. Not. Not. Yeah. Not even two feet deep. See, it's all full flat. Um, it, yeah, you do. Under this. You get tie downs, though. Which are real. Those are they're, going they're to the. They're real. They're real. What's under here? Uh, Jack. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jack and a little bit more space. I don't know what you could possibly put in. And this is uh, foam and cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, the interior's completely Spartan. Mm hmm It's wireless car plays the neatest tech feature it's got, and that works most of the time. Mm -hmm. Sync 4 has not been great. Um, yeah, it's this, it's for what it is, gets reasonably good gas mileage. Like what do you time, get? Um, 20 and a half miles per gallon, which is... It's better than that. Yeah, so 35 that... inch bunch of range, like... Okay, so modern fuel injection. Interesting here how they put your backup camera on the spindle of your spare tire. I mean, that's neat. Yeah. How heavy are these wheels? Well, they're probably the same as those. About the same size. Wait, what are these? These are these are 315 7, 70, 17. 
Um, what are mine? Uh, da, 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 70 R 16s. So yours are wider. Wider and only slight. I mean, there's plenty of sidewall. Well, let's take a drive. Yeah. 